And then there were four. We're at the final four. Not basketball, but baseball. We have the ALCS Tampa Bay facing Houston tomorrow, Monday on the 11th. And then the NLCS LA against Atlanta starting on the 12th, Tuesday. Super excited. So today we're going to break down the ALCS. We're going to break down Houston versus the Rays. We're going to go over how they got here. Some numbers, pitching and hitting, predictions, and keys to the series. Now, the series will start again Monday the 11th. It will be played seven-game series in San Diego, California. Beautiful venue. And we're going to start off with Houston. Let's look how they got here. Now, they seven-hit Minnesota Twins over a two-game series, which shocked a lot of people. I mean, how do you do that? And then they moved on against the A's. Now, the A's are not a good hitting team, so keep that in mind. But they're a great pitching team. And the key you'll notice here wasn't really pitching for Houston. It was their hitting. And it was actually clutch bullpen. But their pitching, if you look at it, they gave up nine runs. They gave up five runs, six runs. So let's break down the box score. This is game one. Now, the first game against Minnesota, they threw two starters at them. Great game, Valdez. It's a three-game series. They're throwing everything they could at Minnesota. Then the second game, look at their bullpen. Four and two-thirds, Rally, Javier, and Presley. One-hit ball. You're going to recognize those names throughout the series. Then game one against Oakland, look at the bullpen again. That's Five innings, no hit ball. McCullers only went four. So you're going to, again, recognize these these names right here. Paredes, Javier, Presley, they continue to be the strength of the bullpen. Game two, Valdez went, pitched a great game. And again, same relievers popping in there, closing out the game. Two innings, one hit ball. And then this is a game they lost, game three against Oakland. And then game four, Look at the names, Taylor, Javier, Paredes, Presley, so some familiar names. So, again, the strength for Houston is, you know, Granke and Valdez is, are good, but it's that bullpen. They're very strong bullpen, and they've got fielding. They've got the best fielding in baseball. So when they're able to get teams against their backs, they're not going to make errors. They're not going to make mistakes. It gives their offense a chance to put up some points, and it's very interesting because throughout the series, Houston is ranked – ninth for their ERA but for hitting they're a lot better and we'll go into those hitting stats in just a moment now let's break down the Tampa Bay Rays and how they got here um, their schedule they faced Toronto in a three-game series and really Toronto had no chance going up against Neil Glasnow and Morton in a three-game series this is pretty much what you expected they just walked over Toronto now with New York this was the best series of 2020 playoffs in my opinion you got Glasnow Morton Snell going to going up against Cole, Tanaka. I mean, it was just a great series. But the thing that stuck out for me is, look at the last two games. The Yankees held Tampa Bay to only three runs. So that I'm just not sure if that's a concern for Tampa. But very big series, very big win against Yankees. Now let's break down game one against Toronto. It was a simple one. I mean, Schneel, Bullpen came in, Castillo, Anderson, and Fairbanks. And you're going to recognize those names throughout the box scores. And then game two, uh, glass now look at that two earned runs eight k's and they you know they had a big lead so they threw in some of their back end relievers now game one against the yankees Schneel had a bad outing and then curtis just imploded against the yankees and they blew it up on him then game two they bounced back with glass now look at that 10 k's and then these three names were really solid throughout the playoffs so far castillo anderson and fairbanks you're going to see them a lot Game three, they won again with Morton with a solid outing. They brought in Curtis, brought in the rest of the bullpen, did a great job, and was at four innings pitch, one, one earned run. And then game four that they lost against the Yankees, Yankees just hit them the whole time. Yarborough actually pitched pretty good, five innings pitch, two earned runs. And then the game five, look at that bullpen, Anderson, Fairbanks, and Castillo. Again, six and two-thirds inning, one earned run, solid. So for the Rays, we all know about their pitching of Glasnow, Morton, and Schnell. And their bullpen is incredible. If these guys get a lead, they're going to be very difficult to face. And, you know, the Yankees saw that. Now, moving ahead to the series against Houston, that's going to be very interesting because Houston was able to hit Oakland, which is a fantastic pitching staff. So let's look at their offense real quick and get a little snippet of what both teams have done during the playoffs. Now let's take a look at Houston. Look at these numbers. They are uh, offensive juggernaut thus far in 2020 during the playoffs. Number one batting average, ranked second in runs on base percentage and OPS. And you're wondering, how the hell is this the same team from regular season? Remember, this is the same core team that's been together for a long time. Altuve, you know, Korea, Springer, Bregman, all these guys have been playing a while. They know how to hit. Even, I know what you're thinking, while well, they cheated. They didn't cheat the whole time. This is still a very 
tough team to pitch against. And the way I look at Houston is like piranha in water. Once one piranha finds like meat, then the rest of the piranha just, you know, go through a feeding frenzy. And that's how they are. They really thrive off of the moment. They really thrive off of rallies. And that's something that the Rays are going to have to make sure that they stop at all times against Houston. Now for the Rays, their offense has been really not that good. Even though they've ranked 4th in runs, look at that batting average rank 10th, on base percentage 10th, OPS 9th, so they haven't been blowing it up. But granted, they just faced a really good pitching staff in the Yankees. But that's something to think about because look what Houston did to Minnesota, who was a powerhouse offensive team. So the Rays, what's interesting about them is they still are clutch. They still can pull it off, but... You know, what's going to come of them during the series? Are they going to be able to put together big rallies, big runs? Are they going to be able to hit off of Houston? So it just has me scratch my head, but we'll have to wait and see. Now let's look at the keys to the series. Keys to the series for Houston is the race starters. Morton, Sneal, Glassnow, they have to get to them, start wearing them down. The reason why? This is a seven-game series. you got to start wearing down that bullpen, start wearing down the pitching. I know it's easier said than done, but that's what Houston's going to have to do. And then the fans. Major League Baseball is allowing more fans in the stands. Are they going to start getting under the skin of Houston? We'll have to wait and see. And then keys to the series for the Rays. They have to stop the clutch hitting. I know that's, again, easier said than done. you got to stop Houston from rallying and those players from getting their offensive going, and they have to pressure Houston's bullpen because I don't think – Grinky's going to be going a long game, so they have to start chipping away at that bullpen. My prediction. This is very hard because Houston continued to destroy my bracket, continues to surprise baseball, but the Rays have been one of the most solid teams in baseball. They've got the pitching staff, and if the the old age adage of pitching wins baseball, then it's going to be the Rays. So I'm picking the Rays to go to the World Series. Thank you again for watching Baseball News Club. Please subscribe, please tell your friends, and follow us on Instagram. Have a great day.